All right, we're gonna go ahead and go over the extra practice for chapter 14. And so let's take a look at this first one. It's talking about the different blood types. And um, we have that there's 44% type O, 42% type A, and 10% type B, and the rest are AB. I went ahead and added together those top three. So since I added those together to get 0.96, I could answer question A, which answer, question A says, how many have the type AB? Well, that is that one minus 0.96. Question B, type A or, which is addition, type B. So I added together type A and type B. And C, you do not have type A. Well, since 42% is type A, everything else is the 58%. All right, number two, you pick two donors. So you have two events and neither of them is type AB. So you have the first one is not type AB and the second one is not type AB. And we know from the first question, that's 0.96 for the not type AB, and then 0.96 for the not type AB. So that's how you get your 92.16% overall. Since the other not type ABs is 0.96. All right, question B. This time you pick five donors. So now that you're going to pick five donors, you've, you are uh, to determine the probability of none of them being type O. So all five of them are not O. So I wanted to recall how to figure out the purport probability of not O. Well, I can see up here O is 0.44. Well, if O is 0.44, then the rest of that is 0.56. So 56% are not O. So therefore, I just put all five of those people as 0.56 probability, and that's how you get your 5.51%. Okay, the next one you pick seven and at least one of those seven donors is type B. So we know the probability of at least one is one minus the probability that none of the seven is type B. So you're gonna to have to take that little section right there out to the side and figure out that part. So not type B. So I kinda of had to look up there to remember that type B is that 10%. So since type B 10%, everything else is 90%. And I want none of those seven so that's 0.9 to the seventh power. That's how I get that section there. One minus that 0.4783 is 52.17%. All right, and the um, last one identifies the specific order <clears throat> in saying that the sixth one is the type AB. So first, second, third, fourth, and fifth are the not AB, and the sixth one is that 0.04, others being 0.96. So you multiply that, you want the first and the second, and the third, and the fourth, and the fifth, all to be the 0.96, and the sixth one is your 0.04, that makes 3.26%. All right, so now we are talking about a lecture hall of statistics students. And so we have defined for us that the probability that um, the person has taken no calculus classes is 0.55. And 32% of the, of the class, the students have taken one semester of calculus. So I added those two together to get 87%. That then told me the rest of them are the two plus semesters of calculus. So if the no semesters plus the one semester 
is 87%. Then the two or more semesters is the rest of that, which is 13%. All right, so B has, there was really kind of two ways you can think about getting someone or some, uh, probability that someone has taken some calculus. So taken some means they've taken one semester or they've taken two plus semesters. So you could add those two pieces together, the 0.32 plus the 0.13. And, uh, or you could think of this maybe in a different way. Uh, you could think, okay, I need everything except for the no calculus. So that would be one minus the no calculus. And so one minus 0.55. So either way, you still come up with the same answer. That 45% of the class has taken some calculus, one or more semesters. Okay, Who is, uh, what's the probability that a student has taken no more than one? So no more than one, no more than one. That means none or one is okay. So the none is that 55%. The one semester is that 32%. And so you can add those together and that's how you get that 0.87. All right, now to the next one. We now are talking about selecting two students from that group, two students. So A says neither of those two students has studied calculus. So with neither of those two students, so neither one, the first student has not studied calculus. First student, no calculus. And, and the second student has not studied calculus. And that again is the 0.55 again. So there's how you get your 30.25%. All right, so this question B was very tricky to me when I first did this problem because my eyes honed in on the statement at least one. And I thought, oh, ding, 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 that's our trigger word and I've told the students that. And so let's go with it. One minus the probability of none is my instinct when I see at least one. So, so I read this again. And the question says, what's the probability that both students have studied at least one semester of calculus? So the issue is that it's not the pro one minus the probability of none, and that could be so confusing, but I need to explain why it's not that. When this problem starts out, it says both students. On other problems, when we do the at least one, that would be something like at least one of the students. So the at least one would have to refer to the students, not how many calculus classes they've taken. So that is so tricky and so just really detail oriented. I don't want you to get hung up on this and get upset, but we know both of them have had at least one class. So the first person has had one or two semesters or more, and the second person has had one or more semesters. So that's your 0.4 times your 0.45 times your 0.45. And so that's how you then get that 20.25%. So again, I'm sorry that this problem is a bit tricky, but it talks both students. That means both of them are getting that same value of at least one semester of calculus. All right, now, C, on the other hand, question C. Ding, 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 ding. This one is talking about at least one or more students. That's, this one is at least one or more students. 
So this one is our special situation. The other one said both students. This one says at least one student. Okay, so this one is one minus the probability that none of the two students, none of the two students has had more than one semester of calculus. None of the two students has had more than one semester of calculus. So, you should know that little section right there has to have its own little side calculation. So take that section there over to the side and think about how to do that. Neither student has had more than one section. So not more than one is not the 13%. That's the 87%. That is not more than one. So the first one, not more than one and the second one, not more than one. So that's one minus the probability that neither one of them has had more than one semester of calculus. So that comes out to 24.31%. All right, moving on to the next one. You can see that I'm just not gonna do this problem. Um, it's kind of a messed up problem. It talks about four bars, three lemons, three cherries, and a bell. And that's not 10 items. That is, in fact, 4 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1 makes 11 items. So I'm going to have to fix this problem for next year. It is not done correctly. So we're just going to skip it. So this last one, you have the situation where you shuffle a deck of cards, you pull out a card, and you identify that card. But you replace it back into the deck and reshuffle. So every time you draw, there's still 52 cards in there. So you start drawing. The first one's red. The second one's red. The third one is red. And oh my gosh, you got 10 red cards. Do you think then that you are due to have a black because you've gotten so many in a row? And that answer is absolutely not. There is not a higher probability that the next card will be black because you've gotten so many reds. Because every single time, the card has been replaced. And since the card has been replaced, each draw is independent of the previous one. It is always 50% red and 50% black. No change in the probability. So you are not due a black one. It's just consistently always 50% not a higher probability. So then that takes us into the next one about if this is an example of the law of large numbers. And so that is, yes, this does play into what's happening with the law of large numbers because we know from the law of large numbers that in the long run, as you do many trials, many, 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 many trials, as you do many trials, many, many trials, the cumulative overall probability will be 50% reds and 50% blacks. And 10 cards is not many, many, many trials. So you have not done many. You are not anywhere close to many. So it's possible to have 10 reds in a row. It just means somewhere on down the line, you're gonna have more blacks. But you don't know for sure that the next one is going to be a, a black. It's still a 50-50 chance. 